So today guys I have this amazing 2024 Mazda 630 and it's an all-wheel drive with 2.5 engine 191 horsepower and this car has amazing technology it's called it is modified but it's the activation cylinder technology uh, for this 2024 uh, Mazda 630 what it's what it does it gives you more mpg so basically this car right now it has 26 mpg in a city and 31 mpg on a highway and it's not bad for all-wheel drive 2.5 engine car small suv there is a lot of cool things there is a lot of bad things in my opinion but cool thing it's a nice design it's a small suv it's kind of a little bit lifted not lifted but suspension a little bit raised so especially if you're driving through the snow or rain or some uh, weird conditions road conditions in your city and the cool thing that's the plastics uh, on the side of it so all the fenders the doors they do have that plastic replaceable uh, so basically if you're gonna scratch it you're just gonna take it out and put the new one if you want to but you don't have to paint the whole door or the whole fender that's a cool thing uh what about the brakes the car itself not that big not that huge it's gonna hold five passengers maybe because the rear bench it's kind of small so maybe for the kids it's gonna be enough but for the adults three adults in the back so 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 according to the brakes what i can see you're gonna re replace them in about 30 thousand miles again this car gonna have 60 thousand miles warranty on the engine transmission but the brakes up to five years 36,000 miles and there is some cool things i'm going to show you at the end of the video how you can save money and replace some parts for free if your car is still under the warranty but you don't want a dealer uh, to avoid that warranty because of some mistakes people doing so design of this mazda it's kind of popular so the a lot of people buying it and love it because it is affordable price but same time mazda 630 has a huge competition because there is a lot of cars you can choose from you can go with toyota uh, you can go with honda hr you can go with something else like the maybe small lexus ux you can buy it a little bit more expensive but it's not the, like the small suv only one only two available on the market so there's a lot of cars you probably gonna get lost if you're trying to spend less than 30 and get some nice small suv with all-wheel drive system so this car it's gonna be i think one of them uh who has 27 thousand msrp and it's all-wheel drive uh, powertrain 2.5 engine 190 horsepower it's not bad at all plus mpg for this car it's not that bad at all also because i was thinking it's going to get about 16 18 that's what the car getting right now but it's probably because i'm driving this way the way it looks like i think it's cool the headlights it's not uh, halogen anymore it has a xenon light those blinkers inside the bumper on the bottom they look cool and especially at night they blinking they blinking cool too so this car has a good high rating about the safety feature about reliability and about the price again 27,000 msrp for the all-wheel drive car it's not bad at all and we have a select model which is non-turbo engine it's simple interior but we do have a leather it's not uh, equipped with moonroof but there is a lot of different things equipped with select model so which is kind of i'm still wonder why they doing it right now maybe it's kind of mandatory but again why only mazda and toyota doing it not all the production line so like a line keeper blind side assistance and some other thing like a emergency braking system that's really helpful especially for the new driver if you buy in the car and it's your first car so you have a lot of different technology which is going to save 
your life while you're driving it because again there is a cell phone there is a lot of different distractions somebody might use in the horn so many times and you know it's kind of distracting you from the road condition and from the way you're driving so this car it's perfect for the lifestyle in a city it's not the huge amount of space inside the car you cannot fit a lot of stuff you might gonna put a lot of kitties or your favorite dog or you maybe have two dogs so you can put it in the car but it's not so many uh it's not so many room to put the whole family and drive it far away because i think it's not comfortable but for the short uh distances inside the city i think it's one of the perfect car available on the market right now so it's all wheel drive it's a small nice looking suv the design of this car i think it is amazing and it's really easy to drive it it's easy to park this car and the price is going to be more than affordable so basically for the price of the car 27,000 msrp so lease or finance doesn't matter you're going to make a payment about 400 a month plus insurance is going to be not that expensive because it's a mazda so the car itself not expensive that means you're not going to pay crazy money for insurance that's really good points especially for the new drivers because new drivers they always struggling to get the insurance for less so i think mazda is going to help you with that so what about the rest it is a japanese quality so basically all the panels they fit in so good there is not so many noises going on inside the car because the plastic the materials they're using it's kind of approved from the generation before and they're all soft so all the door panels they kind of uh, smooth and soft and i like it the way you touch in the car you know sometimes you jump in inside the new car all the plastics like a chevy they do have a strong plastic and it's and it's smelly and it's kind of noisy when you're driving it they are touching each other but not the mazda mazda it is a japanese car so always in my opinion between new japanese or new american car i would go with japanese just because it is much nicer quality more practicality i would say and uh, it's just much nicer looking car that's the way uh, japanese car build so they want to bring more customer uh, no nothing so. no да да давай давай еще окей давай еще нормально so besides that uh, futuristic design of this Mazda, we have a lot of black panels. Even if you're gonna get black car, you're still gonna have a black mirrors. White car, same, black mirrors, there is a black rims and the black plastic on the side. Like I said, the plastic, it's so practical. So basically, if you're gonna park it somewhere and scratch it here or there, you can take this part out, buy the new one, and it's not gonna be expensive, just replace it. So you don't have to do the repairs on your fender, on your bumper, or paint the whole panel that plastic it's most i would say touchable most like kind of dangerous parts always getting uh scratched or damaged by some small accidents so and the mazda they went ahead and did that plastic for you so you can save your time and money by replacing it or just leave it the way it is because those scratches on the plastic it doesn't make sense i think mazda one of the famous car known by its own design because even if you're going to take the old one from 2000s like cx 90 70 30 whatever they've been doing there is a lot of cx3 cx5 cx7 you're probably going to get lost but that famous design of the tail lights and headlights all those forms they kind of knowing well so if you're going to take the mazda emblem from this car probably everybody going to say that's the mazda that's what they famous for and again what about the fitment the cargo space in this car that much so basically you have more space on the back but the trunk lid is gonna illuminate that all so basically for me is i have a kids and i need to put a lot of stuff in the trunk this car not gonna fit my lifestyle but again if your lifestyle is so simple and easy and you just traveling with your dogs or cats or with your friend around the city or going somewhere out to joshua tree maybe enjoy your weekend this car gonna be perfect for you believe me or not and it's gonna save you a lot of money for the gas that's the cool point one of the most cool point about the japanese car same as the mazda uh that's uh, reliable so basically this car is so reliable i can buy the used one and drive it 
from Los Angeles all the way to New York without thinking about this car burning a lot of oil like a BMW and my engine might gonna be dead by uh, Montana State. So Mazda, it's not that kind of car. Mazda, you just have to put gas and drive it wherever you want to whatever you need or whatever you want. So the cool point about buying a brand new car, nobody drove it, nobody did some other... The cool point about buying a new car, that's the way it smells, that's the way you feel in yourself, because you're feeling kind of proud of yourself, you're driving a brand new car, nobody drove it before, nobody got an accident before, and it's a brand new and it's all yours. Even if you're making a payment for this car, it's still yours because your name on the registration. So if you never done it before, I would recommend you buy something brand new, lease it. Even if you cannot afford BMW or Mercedes right now, you might gonna do it later on, but right now you can buy the Mazda or Toyota. Even the Chevy, doesn't matter what kind of brand, buy brand new. The best point about buying brand new car, you do have a warranty, you do have a warranty everything. I mean, you do have a warranty for everything, for your tires, suspension, brakes, engine, transmission, AC, and doesn't matter. So you're going to have a huge peace of mind about your car. So you can drive it anywhere you want without knowing something going to happen. And if something going to happen in other state, you just go into a Mazda dealer in Nevada or Montana, giving them the key, taking a loaner car and driving uh, to your destination. That's the coolest point I would ever have about buying a brand new car. And Mazda or Chevy, doesn't matter what kind of car you're going to get. So what about the trunk area? The trunk area, it's not that huge, but again, we can drop the back seat uh, down and it's 40, 60. So basically you can put your ski or your snowboard. There is some things I don't understand. So basically on the premium packages, we have a power lift gate. This one doesn't have a power lift gate, but we have a lock button. So basically I think you can lock the car by pushing that button and just close the trunk and the car is gonna be locked so you can walk away from it. Uh, there is no cover for the cargo area. Here we do have a full size uh, donut and all the tools we need to replace that donut with your broken tire. So guys, what do you think about design of this Mazda? Is it good or it's not? If you have the same car, just put your comment below and uh, share it with me. What do you think about Mazda itself and especially about 630? I think it's really cool for the money it's worth. Let me know. So I'm gonna jump inside the car and show it to you how can I adjust the seat. So basically my working spot in this car. But before that, I wanna show you the key. So that's the Mazda Keyless Go system, right? You can open and close the door, lock it. I mean the door without pushing any button and without using actual key. But actual key, I just found that it's sitting right here. So it's basically the same technology as a Ford did back in the days. That's the actual key and you can use it to open the door but in case your battery is dead you cannot just take the cover out you have to lift it up the handle and put this metal blade right there and when you put it right there you can open or close it but basically you're gonna do that to open your door that's kind of life hack if you don't want to wait for your AAA to arrive because sometimes AAA taking forever let me jump in, let me jump in. So what I got? I got adjustable steering column. You're moving down and up and down, back and forth. So it's cool. There's a four sides we can move it. What about the seat? So I put the seat all the way down. Otherwise I cannot fit myself here. So pretty much I can adjust the seat in a different position to fit myself in the car. And the steering wheel, the steering column, I can, I do have a lot of uh, adjustment to fit myself. And the cool point, it's not the Prius, so it's not covering my uh, cluster. I can see all information, whatever providing to me. So that's what new generation cars doing for me doing with me guys i have to buy i had to buy and i buy them a lot actually that's a 
USB-C charger for my phone and that's the thing I'm always complaining about but the Mazda went kind of much deeper and right now they have only two USB-C ports and no power outlets anymore so you cannot plug something and charge only USB-C that's all you got so what about the space again for me it's kind of tiny car I would say I like the plastic I like the way it's kind of <clears throat> it's kind of soft but same time the door is big windows is small and it's not if you compare with something new I recently drove that's a Chevy Equinox I would say about the same SUV same price range but it's much more comfortable in the Chevy because the windows much bigger not much but they are bigger and uh, visibility inside that Chevy much better again in my opinion the climate control it's so tiny small in the middle of the dashboard and there is not so many buttons you can use anymore climate control uh, central multimedia screen and again the multimedia screen I don't like it much because the way I'm sitting right now one third of that screen it's covered by dashboard so the camera backup camera it's really small the screen itself supposed to be much bigger picture if you're gonna get something premium this is just a select so we don't have a we don't have a navigation in this car but same time we have an apple play so basically whatever going on my phone i can see it on the screen for this car and what about the cool options like i said there is a line keeper we have a distronic plus we can adjust the uh, space between the car in front of us we have a digital speedometer right now so basically what i can do i can change it i can choose different different look on my cluster that's kind of cool if you want to play video games we have an auto high beam most of the cars right now do and the push start button is it all reachable for me more than enough so the climate control i can use it without destruction and uh, some other cool things which one i don't know yet so the sport mode the shifter automatic transmission shifter it's it is the same i would say for 2024 they probably should do like a joystick not the uh, old style shifter so the menu and multimedia itself I don't like it because it is too complicated in my opinion so it's not easy to go through it to save the channels you want and on and on and on especially when you drive in the car but it's all design I would say they steal it from the Audi in 2000 what eight nine audi they start doing that i think mazda that time they've been doing kind of same thing so for the city car i think it's more than enough it is practical it is reliable and all the places you want to reach in the car they are reachable the design of the seat the interior itself it's nice i like it i like the materials like i said before the door panels this fake leather all around and again that peace of mind about uh, full warranty in a brand new car it's always good so this car it's more than practical in my opinion again if you don't have a big family uh, there is a lot of places you can reach from the driver's seat there is a lot of things you can use but what i see right now there is a cool things for example we have an auto hold button that's going to be same as a bmw you have a long period of time basically every time when you stop at the traffic light the car going to hold itself by e-brake so you don't have to push the brake all the time uh, you just step on the gas and the car going to go so right here in the middle we have that indicator about the seat belts so before we used to have only passenger and the driver seat so right now i see most of the it right now i see it's a common thing uh automakers they are doing the second row uh seat belts so basically if somebody gonna jump on the back seat ты можешь там лучше снимать so а потом там снимешь я еще раз сниму сейчас покажу хуйню so basically if somebody jumping on the back seat and gonna click 
the seat belt, you're gonna see the second row. And one of the passenger clicked the seat belt, the other two on the side, they didn't click it. So you can tell them, put your seal belt, you can tell them, put your seal, you can tell them, put your seat belt on. Otherwise, I'm gonna stop the car and kick you out from that. And again, if your kids sitting in the back and someone gonna unclick it just to play around, you can tell them you have to click it back. So that's kind of cool option if you are the Uber driver. So if you don't wanna get the ticket for your passengers on the back, just make sure everybody on the green uh, sign, not on the red. So actually the engine on this car, it's so quiet. And uh, I wouldn't say it's uh, 0 60, it's too impressive for me because it's gonna get from 0 to 60 in about 8 seconds. That's about the same time for my 1994 Mercedes 320. But the turbo version of this car is gonna get you from 60, from 0 to 60 in about 6 seconds. What do you think about it? I don't think it's super fast. Again, it's not the car for the racing. It's not the car, uh, you know, to impress someone how fast you can go. It's just nice, reliable city SUV with all wheel drive. But same time, you wanna make sure you have enough power under the hood if you wanna pass someone on the freeway or any other emergency situation you might gonna get. So from my experience and my opinion, I think it's always good to have a kind of strong, powerful engine under your hood because you never know what kind of road condition or situation uh, life gonna bring you. And the more you have power under the hood, the more kind of control you have over the car or over some situation you might gonna get on the road. That's cool. Again, Mazda, it's not super powerful, super kind of speedy car, but 200 horsepower, almost 200 horsepower. It's more than enough for this small, beautiful SUV. And the car is so smooth. It's it's kind of nice to drive. You know, it's nice to touch the steering wheel. It's a leather. It's not uh, rubber. That's feeling so good. So what I do like also about the Mazda and the way it drives, it's not the CVT transmission. It's a regular automatic transmission. And um, because it's all wheel drive, it might gonna help you to get from the kind of mud or if you're stuck somewhere in the sand and the snow, automatic transmission, it's much better because CVT, like for example, Subaru during with Outback CVT transmission, they always overheating and uh, it's easier in my opinion, again, from my experience, it's easier to get stuck and didn't get out from, from any condition you got in on the CVT. So, Regular automatic transmission much better than CVT transmission. If you're gonna compare same size SUV, for example, Subaru Forester, they do have a CVT transmission, unless it's a turbo version of the car. And uh, it's not about the comfort, it's not about the way it drives, but the CVT, CVT, they have much more problems. Plus, they are overheating much faster if you're gonna get somewhere in the snow or in the mat. So regular automatic transmission, in my opinion, it's more reliable, it's more comfortable, and it's a much, much better transmission. So what I can tell about brand new 2024 Mazda 630, it is practical, it is reliable, the price is so great, and it's gonna be cheap price for the insurance, but same time, you're gonna get a lot of car for this money. And believe me or not, after three, five years, this car, it's always gonna be about 20, 25,000 on the market. So don't waste your time and wait for the used one, just go and buy the new one somewhere else, because просто нихуя просто нихуя нихуя so if this car is gonna fit your lifestyle definitely you have to buy it mazda it is a japanese car and it's i think worth all the money whatever they're asking for it between turbo engine or non-turbo engine go with whatever you are comfortable are i would go with regular one even there is less horsepower but you are getting more mpg and the car itself five seven thousand less from the msrp so what's the point of having the turbo engine i do not know
for the price this car you can get right now you probably can get some used one but i would go with the new one the car it is reliable it is nice to drive and it's probably gonna fit your lifestyle if you're looking at the small suv like that there is a lot of choices but i'm always saying go with new one because it's gonna give you less headache and uh, that's pretty much it